So in these few videos, we just want to look at doing some um, basic TBC surfacing. So creating surfacing, um, doing some volume calculations, and maybe do a cut fill analysis on um, between two surfaces um, and gener generating a cut fill map. So we can basically take any sort of um, uh, various different types of data to form our first surface. So it could be an existing CAD file, it could be a design file, it could be a survey. Um, in this example, I'm going to take a survey. It's going to look unnatural. It is a real project, this data set, um, but it looks unnatural because it's been gridded. Um, so it actually, I think it's originally derived from photogrammetric data. So we just drag and drop this job file, the survey file in. Um, it's given me a warning. I'm not going to look at that just now. And we should be able to um, review the data in TBC. So this is our OGL survey. So to form a surface from this uh, survey, we can simply just go up to surfaces and we can go to create surface. And I can just call this um, OGL. And we can choose to give it a color. So if I choose to make it green, and then it's asked me which members to form the surface, and I can just do a box around everything, um, and I can hit um, OK. OK will close the command once I'm done. And then it's quite normal to see these uh, triangles being formed that we don't want. There's a few ways to get rid of these. So one of them is from our surfacing command. We can choose to um, do uh, trim surface edge, try to find the command here in this new version. So trim surface edge, and we can basically just one click outside, one click inside, and we can basically trim these, these uh, triangles away. We cannot trim a triangle such that it would actually leave a point disconnected from the DTM. So we could trim these two, we can trim this one, it won't allow me to trim that final one because it would basically mean that this is no longer connected. So we'd be better to remove this point from the DTM. So that's a rule when you're trimming the triangles. A much easier general approach to these is if we just click on the surface and hit properties, one of the commands, one of the um, values on the DTM is the maximum edge length. So if I just basically know that I don't want any triangles that will form more than 40 meters, then we can see that it basically trims, trims out all those triangles. So we can review this um, in 2D. We can, once we've formed a surface, then we can go and actually see the um, surface slicer view. So the surface slicer view is up here and we can just take a slice through and we can actually um, create some vertical exaggeration in that by holding my mouse over the bottom window, holding control and shift and wheeling my mouse button. And we're putting vertical exaggeration on that surface slicer view. Um, however, a lot of the time it's easier to view it in 3D. If we jump into the 3D view, then we can spin round. We see the vertical exaggeration that we have in the 3D view in the bottom left hand of the window here. Again, I'm just holding control, shift, and wheel, and we can see the vertical exaggeration on this. I like to generally use a value of around three. It gives you a fairly realistic uh, view of the surface. Um, what I generally do when I'm looking at the surfaces is I turn off the actual points that have created that surface, so turn off the view of them. So this is sitting in a layer called points. So what I can do is just go into this layer called points, disconnect this, uh, deselect them so we no longer view them. We can then click on the surface. It's color green, but it's not showing in green because one of the properties of the surface is whether or not shadows, sorry, whether the shading is by surface color by material or by elevation as it currently is. If I just change that to surface color, if I turn the wireframe off, if I turn the back faces off, then I'm looking at a much more natural looking surface. So what I can do here is once I'm happy with this original surface, we can just go to back to um, here and we can turn the surface off. We can turn the points off and it's good practice to basically just relayer something like this. So instead of just sitting in the fairly generic points layer, 
we can put in a layer called um, OGL. If I've got something called that, which I don't, so I'm just going to go to new layer and give it a name OGL and just, uh, that's fine. So it's relaying all these points into OGL. And then we can just uh, deselect these OGL points ready for my next um, data set. So as I said, my next data set could be um, a design. It could be a second survey. Um, in the example of a second survey, it could be after a topsoil strip. So here I've got a job file here that we have a 300 mil drop in the, roughly in the topsoil. We could also select the surface itself and we could choose to do an offset surface. And I could just choose to type in topsoil strip and I could simply go to minus 0 0.3 and put a, I could clip it to a certain area if I want to restrict it to a certain area. But if I just put in a, a vertical offset, we now have two surfaces. If I go to my plan view, if I go to my surface slicer view, then what we can now see is we actually have the two surfaces. And if I zoom in in this lower view, then we can actually see the grades as we actually go across the entire site. So I'm going to just turn off the topsoil strip. So the command we used there was offset surface. And I'm going to turn off the OGL. And I'm going to just close the slicer view. And I'm going to turn in, um, so drop in a second survey. So this is actually a second survey. But as I said, it could be a, a design, CAD design, 3D CAD design. It can be anything that whereby we want to form a second survey, a second surface. So we're just going back into here because this is a survey. We're actually going to process the feature codes from this survey. And it's this one here. And we can see that we're basically generating line work that we can then, it helps to control our break lines for the, the second surface. So I'm selecting these points. I'm once again going to the surfaces command and once again going to the create surface. I'm going to call this a box cut. We're going to give it a color, so I'm going to give it orange. Um, we can put a date in it. And the, the good thing about putting a date in, this, in the um, surfaces is naturally when you're doing any earthquake quantities, it's always assuming the latest date is the latest surface. So when you're doing a cut fill, it's naturally assuming that the oldest date is the original surface and the youngest date is the, the nearest surface. Near as, as the um, latest surface. Um, what it also does is it tags it to the to the um, the surface itself. So if we're wanting, if we're interested in seeing how much material has been removed over time, then it's basically tagged to the actual surface itself. So if we just uh, select that second surface, and we're just going to hit OK, and what we can do is go into the 3D view. We've chosen the color green. But as I said before, it's only going to actually use that when we go into the surface color. And I'm going to get rid of these wire faces, wire frames on the back faces. And that is our second surface. If we turn on through to the view filter manager on the left hand side, if that ever disappears, we just go to home and we turn on the view filter. And we can turn on our OGL and we can turn on our topsoil strip. We can go back to the plan view. And for instance, we can go to the surfaces command. And once again, we can go into the surface slicer view and we can take a slice through the three surfaces now. So I'm just going to finish by doing some quantities. So if I want to do some earthworks analysis, then from the surfaces tab, we can go to earthworks report and I can choose to do a surface to surface analysis. And I can say from the OGL, which is the oldest surface, and we'll just say, or let's go from the topsoil strip, assuming this topsoil has been stripped, and we'll go to the box cut. And we're just not going to constrain it at all, so we're just going to allow the full area, and we can just hit OK. And it's basically going to calculate um, my earthworks volume. So we can see here that roughly we've got 2 million cube coming out of this, um, and very, very little kill, uh, cut in this particular site. And it gives me a few other statistics. It's given me the, some areas here. 
and it's given me the maximum depth of materials um, for cut and for fill. So that's a quick overview on how to create surfaces, how to do some um, quick reviewing of the surfaces, and then how to do an earthworks report to calculate the volume between two surfaces.